With a feeling of deep yet most singular affection, I regarded my dear Morella. And my soul, from our first meeting, burned with fires it had never before known. But the fires were not of Eros, and bitter and tormenting to my soul was the gradual conviction that I could in no manner define their unusual meaning. Yet we met, and fate bound us together at the altar. Morella's talents were of no common order. Her powers of mind were gigantic. I felt this and in many matters became her pupil. I abandoned myself implicitly to the guidance of my wife and entered with an unflinching heart into the intricacies of her studies. Hour after hour would I linger by her side and dwell upon the music of her voice until at length its melody was tainted terror, and there fell a shadow upon my soul. And thus joy faded into horror, and the most beautiful became the most hideous. The time had now arrived when the mystery of my wife's manner oppressed me as a spell. I could no longer bear the touch of her cold fingers, nor the low tone of her musical language, nor the luster of her melancholy eyes. In time, the crimson spot settled steadily upon the cheek and the blue veins upon the pale forehead became prominent. She was dying. I kept no reckoning of time or place, and the stars of my fate faded from heaven, and therefore the earth grew dark, and its figures passed me by like flitting shadows. And among them all, I beheld only Morella. I will never leave you. But her child, to which in dying she had given birth, her child, a daughter, lived. And she grew strangely in stature and intellect, and was the perfect resemblance of her who had departed.
As the years rolled away, her gentle life declined. like shadows in the dying of day. But I knew that she would never leave me In life and death We were eternally bound The winds of the firmament Breathed but one sound within my ears And the ripples upon the sea Murmured evermore Morella <laughs> 